So let's continue. Uh, we are looking at the uh, the idea of residue at infinity. Okay, so uh, so you know basically the way we define residue at infinity is uh, in exactly the way that we define residue at a point in the complex plane. Namely, you calculate the uh, contour integral around uh, the point, going uh, in a positive sense about that point. Uh, of the function and uh, divide by 2 pi i okay so the the only thing is that uh, uh, if the point is a point at infinity uh, then you see the contour should anyway be a contour uh, a simple closed contour on the plane but uh, saying that it goes around uh, infinity in the positive sense amounts to saying uh, that you are choosing this simple closed contour in uh, uh, outside a circle of sufficiently large radius and the fact that it is going around infinity in the positive sense means that you will have to give it the clockwise orientation okay and we saw that uh, using the stereographic projection that this is a uh, this makes sense okay uh, uh, and uh, uh, well um, um, now, what I want to say is that uh, the uh, so there is a version of uh, the residue theorem that we want, uh, uh, which will also work for the point at infinity, and um, uh, so I was explaining uh, 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 last time that uh, uh, you see this this version of residue theorem will will be the statement of that will be the same as the statement of the usual uh, version of the residue theorem. Uh, but there is there are two significant differences the first thing is that when you talk about the residue theorem uh, uh, and uh, of course uh, you are only worried about singular points and you are not worried about uh, so the residue theorem says that if you integrate a function uh, which is analytic uh, except for isolated singularities uh, around a simple closed contour uh, then uh, uh, what you pick up is uh, the, the integral gives you 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the function at the uh, at the finitely many points uh, where the function has isolated singularities okay and the 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 point is that you see uh, you are really uh, not worried about points where the function is analytic or for example isolated singularities which are actually removable because at such a point where if you have an isolated singularity which is a removable singularity the residue will turn out to be zero okay so essentially what you will get is you will uh, in the the in the usual residue theorem uh, uh, what you when you say uh, when you refer to sum of residues or when you refer to residues what really matters is the residues at the uh, honest singularities because residues at uh, uh, removable singularities will always be zero and that's because of Cauchy's theorem. Because if you integrate an analytic function, then you're going to get zero. Okay, so uh, uh, I mean, of course, or a closed contour. Now, uh, the the point is uh, the point is that when you're doing this, uh, also to include the point at infinity, you have to be careful. The fact is that 
uh, infinity behaves very differently in the sense that you a function can have a residue at infinity even if it is analytic at infinity that is the big difference. So, when you uh, talk about residues and also want to include the point at infinity you compulsorily include the point at infinity okay? uh, irrespective of whether infinity is really a uh, honest singularity or not. Okay? So, even if infinity is a removable singularity you have to include the residue at infinity that is the big point okay? and you would not have to do that for a point other than infinity in the complex plane because the, the residue will then turn out to be 0 for, for, a, uh, for a point with the removable singularity. But so, uh, the, the, the easiest uh, simplest illustration of this is the function 1 by w okay? f of w equal to 1 by w you know that function is, uh, is continuous at infinity because uh, at infinity uh, it is in fact it is bounded and uh, well uh, you know at infinity a function being bounded or continuous uh, is good enough, uh, it is the same as it having a limit at infinity, a finite limit, a finite means a limit which is a complex number and you know all these three are equivalent because of Riemann, Riemann's removable singularities theorem uh, or rather the inspiration given by the theorem which, which allowed us to cleverly define analyticity at infinity to be equivalent to one of these things. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so, if you take 1 by w that is well behaved at infinity, okay? uh, in fact it is it is 0 at infinity, okay? the limit goes to 0 as w tends to infinity, so it is uh, so analytic at infinity, but if you integrate 1 by w around infinity uh, around, a, uh, ar, uh, around a simple closed contour that goes uh, in the positive sense with respect to inf the point at infinity, then you are going to get minus 1, you are going to get minus 1. Uh, in fact, you will get minus 1 into 2 pi i, okay? uh, 2 pi i times minus 1, so the, uh, so the residue is minus 1. Okay? So, uh, so, the moral of the story is that uh, here is a function 1 by w, uh, all negative powers of w are good functions at infinity. Okay? So, uh, 1 by w is the simplest, it is good at infinity, the residue at infinity is not 0, <coughs> even though it is analytic at infinity, the residue at, at infinity is minus 1. Okay? So, uh, the big deal, this is the big deal, the big deal is whenever you talk about residue for the extended complex plane, uh, then you must always compulsorily include the point at infinity even if the point at infinity is a point of analyticity, okay? that is very very important. So, so let me um, and, the, and the of course this, this example uh, 1 by w, uh, f of w equal to 1 by w also illustrates another things, it illustrates the following fact that you know this 1 by w has only 2 singular points, 1 is at w equal to 0 that is an isolated singularity because it is not defined at 0. Uh, of course, you could define it as infinity at 0 if you want, uh, so that you get something continuous on the external complex plane. Uh, this is for example, what you do with any Mobius transformation, uh, but the point is that uh, uh, there is also another singularity namely the singularity at infinity that is also an isolated singularity, but it is a removable singularity. And the singularity at infinity has a residue of minus 1, the singularity at the origin has a residue of plus 1 okay? and you add the add them you get 0 and this is the actually the version of the residue theorem for infinity, it says that the total sum of residues is 0, okay? that is the version of the residue theorem, that is one version of the residue theorem at, at infinity okay? uh, for, the, for, the, uh, uh, for the extended complex plane. Okay? And uh, it tells you two, uh, uh, it tells you another, also another imp important thing, why is it that Cauchy's theorem fails at infinity? See if you try to integrate the function 1 by w which is analytic at infinity around a neighborhood of inf uh, around a simple closed curve that goes around uh, the point at infinity, you are not going to get 0, you are you, going to get of course, uh, you are going to get minus 1 which is uh, in fact you will get minus 2 pi i which is not 0, okay? uh, it is 2 pi i times minus 1 which is 2 pi i times the residue at infinity, you are not going to get 0 and that is a violation of Cauchy's theorem because Cauchy's theorem you, by Cauchy's theorem you expect if a function is analytic you expect the integral over a closed curve to be 0. Okay? But the reason is it is not it is not non it is not violating Cauchy's theorem uh, for nothing, what is actually happening is that the non-zero integral at infinity, the value at infinity uh, is to compensate for the residue at 0, so that the total sum of residues is 0. Okay? So, when you integrate 1 by w at infinity around around uh, around infinity you get you get minus 2 pi i and you do not get 0 even though it is analytic at infinity, but then this uh, it is it has to compensate for the plus 2 pi i that you will get if you integrated it around 0 
okay and the sum uh, so that the sum minus 2 pi a plus 2 pi a is 0 and that is the version of the so that is the version of the residue theorem. So, what you must understand is that the fact that the residue theorem works is actually equivalent to the fact that Cauchy's theorem does not work in this case okay and in you now you see that the fact that Cauchy's theorem does not work is not as is not a really a sad thing because you are getting something in exchange for that you are getting a nice version of the residue theorem okay. So, um, so what I will do now is uh, I will let us prove uh, these uh, these versions of the residue theorem. Uh, so, let me write, let me start here. Uh, uh, suppose that uh, 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 suppose uh, f of w uh, is uh, defined in a deleted neighborhood of infinity okay uh, which means it is defined for all w uh, in the exterior of a sufficiently large uh, uh, a circle of sufficiently large radius. Um, now, uh, uh, what you can do is that uh, uh, so you, so if you uh, well so the residue of uh, f of w uh, at infinity uh, if you calculate this quantity this is this is by definition equal to uh, you integrate over uh, uh, you for example integrate you can integrate over any uh, you can integrate over any uh, simple closed curve uh, going around infinity in the positive sense. So, uh, uh, we let us take a circle uh, and uh, uh, you take r sufficiently large uh, you take r sufficiently large so that uh, uh, you know there are no other uh, singularities outside this circle of radius r except the point at infinity okay. Uh, uh, so, that is how large r should be chosen and of course, the point is that you 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 give uh, you give negative orientation. Uh, so, the reason you give this negative orientation uh, this is negative orientation uh, 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 with respect to the usual conventions okay and mind you this is negative orientation. So, let me write uh, with respect to 0 uh, 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 is uh, uh, the same as as positive orientation with respect to infinity okay uh, and uh, so so actually uh, i am taking this integral over mod w equal to r around the i mean with with the clockwise orientation okay so i integrate i take this integral and uh, i i integrate what i of course integrate the function f w dw and well i divide by uh, 2 pi i uh, whatever i get and this is the residue at infinity all right and the point you have to remember is that this integral is anyway defined because uh, I am taking uh, uh, I am actually integrating the function over a over the circle uh, and on the circle it is uh, it is analytic in fact in fact it is analytic in a uh, in a neighborhood of the circle okay. The only problem is the point inside the circle which is the point at infinity mind you the point at infinity is inside the circle you heard me right that is because the the interior of the circle will be uh, we given the clockwise orientation will actually be the exterior of the circle in the usual sense okay. So, uh, so this is the residue at infinity and now the uh, the point is that uh, see uh, suppose you assume that f has of course you know uh, I have taken r sufficiently large so that you know uh, uh, f has no singularities in mod z greater than uh, mod w greater than r uh, greater than or equal to r. Uh, and the only similarity is at infinity okay. So, so let me write that down uh, so that uh, so the r sufficiently large chosen so that uh, f w has no singularities in mod w greater than or equal to if you want uh, r. Uh, there are no singularities right uh, except except so I should say except w equal to infinity because now I am also uh, whenever I say mod w greater than or equal to r I am actually thinking of the the extended complex plane. So, the point at infinity is also there it is an interior point mind you the point at infinity is an interior point for this for this re, for this region mod w greater than or equal to r. 
okay. And uh, interestingly uh, mind you uh, if you look at this region on the complex plane it is unbounded okay. It is un it is unbounded and closed okay. But if you look at the same region mod w greater than or equal to r in the extended complex plane it is compact it is bounded okay. So because you have added that one point at infinity to compactify it so it becomes bounded. So this is so you know mod w greater than or equal to r whether you are looking at it in the complex plane or whether you are looking at it in the extended complex plane makes a lot of difference okay topologically uh, uh, in the complex plane it is closed and bounded in the the external complex plane it is closed and bounded is compact okay. Anyway so um, fine uh, now you see suppose you assume that the function f has only uh, isolated singularities on the whole plane okay wherever it has singularities suppose it has only <coughs> isolated singularities okay. Uh, then what happens is that you know uh, uh, you see those all those singularities uh, uh, in the plane which means that I have left out the singularity at infinity all those singularities in the plane are going to lie inside this circle uh, uh, mod w equal to r given the usual positive anti-clockwise orientation okay. So uh, which is a positive orientation about the origin okay and then the usual residue theorem applies. The usual residue theorem will tell you that this this integral will give you minus of 1 by 2 pi i uh, the integral over the same circle given the positive orientation okay and that will be minus 2 pi i times some of the residues of the function at the isolated singular points inside the circle in the usual sense okay. And then if you put these two together you get the that the total sum of residues uh, and the extended plane is 0 which is the first version of the residue theorem okay. So let me write that down. So this is also equal to uh, uh, minus 1 by 2 pi i times uh, 2 pi i times uh, uh, summation of uh, the residues of f at w i i equal to 1 to uh, or rather let me use not i let me use j uh, w j uh, j equal to 1 to m oops j uh, equal to 1 to m uh, so this is what I will get and uh, and here uh, so so let me say let me tell you that uh, what I have what I have done here is that I have simply uh, put a minus sign because I am uh, evaluating around the circle in the anticlockwise sense okay uh, and then uh, I am using the residue theorem okay. So here is so so here uh, so here is by the usual by the usual. So, so of course you know the, the, the big deal here is that I am I am making an assumption I am making this assumption that uh, uh, f suppose f has uh, only uh, isolated singularities uh, suppose f has only isolated singularities uh, in uh, the complex plane okay uh, and uh, well uh, so so let me also say suppose it has only isolated singularities in the extended plane because I want them to be only finitely many uh, uh, and therefore there are only finitely many singularities mind you an ex uh, mind you uh, an isolated set in the extended plane has to be finite okay because the extended plane is compact right so uh, so suppose f has only isolated singularities in the extended plane and um, then there are only finitely many isolated singularities for f and infinity may or may not be a point of singularity okay but in any case uh, if, if you leave it out then you will get only finitely many singularity isolated singularities in the plane and i am calling those singularities as w1 through wm okay so uh, 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 so let me write that here as uh, w1 
dot 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 w m or the uh, singularities of f in the complex plane okay so uh, so so you know basically what i'm saying is that if w n w1 through w m are the only uh, singular points for a function in the complex plane okay then you they, you can enclose them by a sufficiently large circle okay centered at the origin and then you integrate around that circle what you are going to get is 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the function at those points that is all I have that is all I have used here okay and now if you put all these things together uh, you you if you look at the left side uh, the extreme left and you look at the extreme right and you put them together what you will get is that for a function which has only isolated singularities on the extended plane the total sum of residues is zero and that is the uh, that is one version of the residue theorem for the extended plane so let me write that down, down so okay so uh, all right uh, thus uh, for a function fw uh, analytic on the extended plane with only isolated singularities we have a residue theorem for the extended plane summation of the residues of f at singularities in the plane plus the residue of f at infinity is equal to 0. The total sum of residues is 0. This is this is one version of the residue theorem at infinity, right? Now, uh, and what about the? Uh, so this looks slightly different from the usual version of the residue theorem. The usual version of the residue theorem says that uh, you integrate around a curve, a function, then you are supposed to get two pi i times some of the residues of the sing, uh, of the function at the singular points inside the curve, okay? Uh, in the in the re, in the interior of the curve, does this also work for? Uh, for the extended complex plane it does okay so that is actually equivalent to this right so let me write that down so here is another version uh, uh, another version of the residue theorem for the extended plane let gamma be a simple closed contour in uh, uh, simple closed contour in the extended plane in the extended plane by which we mean actually a simple closed contour in the complex plane okay mean whenever we talk about simple closed contour or contour or integration we never think of a curve going to passing through the point at infinity because it really is something that you cannot uh, see on the plane okay maybe you can think of that on the on the riemann sphere and uh, and work with that but the problem is to do that you will have to go to the language of riemann surfaces you have to convert the riemann sphere into a, you must think of it as a riemann surface and do integration you can actually do integration on the riemann sphere uh, along a, for example a, a circle on the sphere which passes through the north pole you can really do that okay but to do that you will have to really use the language of riemann surfaces okay and uh, for more details about that you can look at my uh, video course on riemann surfaces in the same nptel series but <coughs> we are, we are not going to do that so i'm i'm just going to look at the uh, simple closed contour uh, only in the plane okay and that's what it will mean also for a, a simple closed contour in the extended plane okay uh, see uh and f analytic 
in the extended plane except for isolated singularities. Then integral over gamma f w d w is equal to 2 pi i times uh, sum of the residues of f at the singularities inside gamma including necessarily the residue at infinity if it lies inside. So this is the so this is the extra this is the extra thing. Okay. So uh, you it's again the usual residue theorem, but it works also for the extended plane. But the only thing is you have you have, it is two the integral of the function is two pi a times sum of the residues. Only thing is you have to be careful if infinity is inside gamma. Okay. Uh, then you have to include also the residue at infinity irrespective of whether infinity is a point of analyticity of f or not okay that is the big deal the big deal is you have to include infinity absolutely necessarily you cannot omit it okay if it is a usual point on the complex plane and if it is a removable singularity at that point you need not include it because the residue at that point will be zero because the function is analytic at, at a point where the function is analytic the residue is zero okay but it's not this is not true for a point for the point at infinity as we have seen okay so you have to necessarily include the point residue at infinity okay so so in th so this is the so in this sense you know uh, 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 the residue theorem works all right and uh, the of course you know there's it's it's very very important that gamma does not pass through any of these singularities uh, the the singularities in the finite plane that is of course always assumed okay so uh, uh, so so let me write that here uh, probably so you know always we keep you have to keep remembering uh, gamma of course uh, uh, should not pass through any singularity of f this is of course uh, this is always there okay i mean if if uh, the curve over which you are trying to integrate passes through a singular point of the integrand then you are in trouble because uh, 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 of course you know if that singular point is a uh, is a removable singularity it's not you do, really don't have to worry about it okay uh, uh, and and of course you know when when we write uh, uh, things like this we are really not worried about uh, points on the plane which are removable singularities okay we we simply assume that they are points where the function is analytic okay so what really matters the points in the plane that really matter for this statement are the points which are honest singularities which are either poles or essential singularities not removable singularities okay so when i am saying gamma should not pass through any singularity of f of course uh, it should not pass through a honest singularity of f it should not pass through a pole or a essential singularity of f and the reason the, the reason is because at each of these honest singularities the function is not continuous okay uh, the function is not continuous uh, at those points and uh, uh, and you know uh, when, a, when, a, when a function is not continuous at a point it's, it's in general you do not try to define uh, uh, its integral at that point unless you know for example it is bounded okay uh, you know the, the complex contour integration is also defined by integrating by taking path integrals of the real and imaginary parts which are real valued functions okay and so basically it reduces to real integration and you can use Riemann integration if you want you can use the Riemann integral but the point is that uh, and of course you know the Riemann integral is a, lim is a limit of Riemann sums okay and uh, if the function becomes unbounded at a point then in uh, at that point you really cannot expect Riemann sum to uh, Riemann sums to converge properly okay in, in a neighborhood of that point. So uh, you would never try to in general try, define the integral at a point of discontinuity especially when the discontinuity is of a is not of a jump type if it is a very bad discontinuity 
not removable kind of discontinuity, then you do not try to integrate the function at that point, okay. So, um, well, so the, so the moral of the story is that this is the usual version and how does one prove it? it the usual version of the residue theorem just follows from the other version of the residue theorem uh, for the extended plane which says that this total sum of residues including the residue at infinity is 0. So I will I'll just write it down, uh, it is pretty easy. So you know, uh, so let uh, uh, w1 etc w uh, k be the isolated singularities, uh, singularities of f inside uh, 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 so, you know, um, okay, so let me say something here. Um, uh, so, let me go back to the statement and tell you that, you know, if you are really looking at uh, 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 gamma uh, being, uh, uh, you know, positively oriented in the usual sense, okay, if you are looking at gamma, a simple closed contour on the plane which is positively oriented. Uh, going in the that is going in the anticlockwise direction, then you know the interior of the gamma is going to be a bounded domain in in the plane, and and you know uh, you're only worried about the uh, integral there, and the, that integral will give you two pi a times sum of the residues uh, of f inside that bounded domain, then there will be only finitely many, okay, and that is the usual residue theorem, okay, and you don't include you don't have to you of course don't include the residue at infinity because infinity is not there. Okay, because you have taken gamma to be clockwise, uh, I mean anticlockwise. Okay, so actually there is nothing to there is nothing to prove in this statement unless you are looking at uh, gamma, which is uh, going clockwise, so that the interior is actually uh, unbounded in the usual plane, but of course bounded in the uh, extended plane with infinity as an interior point. Okay, so the really the 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 version of the uh, of this theorem that you have to prove is only for the case when gamma is uh, having a clockwise orientation, okay, and that's the version. That's the part that I'll prove, okay. If it is anti if, if, if you are taking gamma with the anti-clockwise orientation, then it is usual residue theorem. There's nothing to prove, okay. So that's a reduction I'm making, uh, obvious reduction. Uh, we only uh, have to um, uh, look at the case when gamma has clockwise orientation. because this is the only case when uh, uh, infinity is inside gamma, okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so let me write this here, infinity is inside gamma. So, well let w1, wk through wk be the isolated singularities of f uh, inside minus gamma, okay. So, you see gamma is taken in the clockwise sense, so minus gamma is taken in the anti-clockwise sense, the usual positive sense and uh, they, it, will, uh, it will contain only uh, a piece, uh, it, will, it will contain only a portion of the uh, usual complex plane and it will have some singularities there. So, so the, pic the picture is something like this, so here is your, so here is your gamma uh, and mind you the orientation is clockwise, okay. And the reason, and and the, the reason for that is that the exterior of gamma, uh, uh, as uh, well, the the interior of gamma, technically the interior of gamma is actually the exterior of gamma, in the usual, uh, in the common sense. Okay, so this is the interior of gamma, what I've shaded. That's because uh, it's clockwise orientation, and uh, and it contains uh, infinity in uh, the extended plane. If you are considering this in the extended, mind you, if whatever I've shaded, whatever I've shaded along with the uh, along with the boundary gamma, if you consider it in the extended plane, that's a compact set. Okay, it's closed and bounded. So uh, because you are actually looking at its image on the Riemann sphere. Okay, which will be like a polar ice cap. All right. So you should remember that because sometimes it's very difficult for people to think that this is bounded because it it. On the plane, it's unbounded, but it's <coughs> but topologically, <coughs> you should think of it as bounded. Okay, so uh, when you're thinking of the Riemann sphere or the extended plane, so well, uh, so here, here uh, I have w1 dot 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 wk. <coughs> these are the fellows, and mind you, these are inside minus gamma. Okay, minus gamma is 
will then have the usual anticlockwise sense orientation, okay, positive orientation <coughs> with respect to the usual plane. And uh, uh, if you calculate the integral over gamma of f w, if you calculate the integral over gamma of f w, this is going to be the same as minus of the integral over minus gamma of f w by the very definition of Riemann integral, okay, you change the uh, orientation of the path and the sign of the integral changes. But if you calculate the integral of this ov over uh, minus gamma, you can apply the usual residue theorem and you will get that being equal to 2 pi i times sum of the residues of f at these w i's or omega i's from i equal to 1 to k, okay, that is what you will get, okay. So on the one hand you will get minus 2 pi i times sum of the residues at uh, w1 through wk, alright, and by the residue theorem, the other version of the residue theorem which, which we saw for the extended plane which says that the total sum of residues is 0, namely the sum of residues at all finite points of the plane plus the residue at infinity that sum is 0. In this if you look at the, uh, 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 if you look at that you will get that this integral is also equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of f outside uh, gamma okay in the shaded region which is the version of a residue theorem that we want. So, uh, so that gives you the proof, so, so let me write that here, so uh, uh, let me just use a different colour, uh, uh, so, so let me write it here in the margin, um, uh, maybe I can remove some of this and make myself a little bit more space, uh, so uh, integral over gamma f w d w is minus of integral over minus gamma f w d w and this is minus of 2 pi i times sum of the residues of f at w j, j equal to 1 to k, this is the usual residue theorem working alright and uh, let us assume that the, the of course you know uh, I am looking at a function which has only isolated singularities in the extended plane, so there are some some more singularities, and they are of course lying outside gamma. I, I, I of course, I, as I told you, I avoid the situation when gamma passes through one of these Honus, Honus singularities. That's not allowed. So there are these there are these remaining w k plus one. Uh, oops. So w k plus one. Uh, w k plus 2 and so on and there is a w let us say w m, uh, there are m uh, finite uh, points in the complex plane where uh, uh, f has isolated singularities and then there is a point at infinity. So this is also equal to minus 2 pi i times mind you now I will get you see uh, minus of summation uh, j equal to k plus 1 to m residue of f at w j plus well I uh, will also get residue of f at infinity, this is what I will get okay, I will get this uh, uh, and of course this minus sign is uh, common to both okay and the reason why I get this is I get this because of the uh, uh, the earlier version of the residue theorem which says the total sum of residues is 0, okay. So I get this, now you see this minus inside the minus outside they, they cancel out and what you get is 2 pi i times sum of the residues of f inside gamma and mind you what are the residues of f at uh, inside gamma, what are the points inside gamma, the points inside gamma are w k plus 1, w k plus 2 through w m and the point at infinity which you have to necessarily include as a singular point. Okay. So, it, so it is correct, so, so this is the proof of the statement that I gave you. So the residue theorem works finely, fine, uh, finely well uh, even for uh, uh, any curve, uh, any simple closed curve in the complex plane, so long as the only thing is that the function should be, should have only finite singular, finitely many, it should have only isolated singularities in the extended plane and your contour should be simple closed, uh, the function uh, should not vanish, I mean should not have any singularities on the, at any point of the contour, okay, that is all you need, okay. So, so you can see there is a, uh, so the behaviour at infinity 
uh, you can see b is, is quite nice. I mean uh, you get also a nice version of the residue theorem. Okay. Uh, now um, there is one more thing I want to tell you. Mm, uh, uh, so, uh, so as I uh, so let let me reiterate uh, one of the one of the reasons. Um, uh, well, just in case this confuses. So, one of the reasons uh, the Cauchy theorem fails for a function which is analytic at infinity is uh, because of this residue theorem. Okay, because uh, you get this in in uh, in exchange, which is good, and. Um, uh, and of course, uh, the uh, uh, the advantage of this uh, theorem is that you can do some difficult computations. Okay, uh, uh, some otherwise difficult computations can be can be done using this. Okay, uh, <laughs> just like the usual residue theorem allows you to compute things, uh, 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 compute integrals. Uh, this extended version of the residue theorem. Uh, uh, Will help you. So, for example, you know, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you uh, uh, philosophically an example. <laughs> suppose you have a an analytic function, uh, okay, which has uh, isolated singularities, and suppose there are a lot of them, okay. Uh, but anyway, I'm only looking at uh, uh, functions which have only, uh, uh, you know, isolated singularities on the in the in the extended plane. So there are only finitely many. But the point is that this finite number may be huge. Suppose I'm looking at an analytic function which has one million singularities. Okay, one million isolated singularities, and suppose there are one million poles, okay, at different points. All right, now I can of course choose a huge circle, which encloses all of them, because they, anyway they are finite. So there's going to be a sufficiently large circle, where the uh, which can enclose all of them, and what am I going to get if I integrate the function around that circle? Uh, well, the usual residue theorem will tell me that you can get the answer by, uh, you know. Uh, taking two two pi i times sum of residues of each of these million poles, okay. So that's uh, that there are millions of there's, there's a million of them. You have to compute a million residues, and that's practically you know you can imagine how difficult it is. But then the extended version of the residue theorem says, don't do all that. Simply compute the residue at infinity and put a minus sign. That's it, okay. And multiply by two pi i, okay. So in that way, the residue at infinity is very useful, okay. So so it's a very useful theorem. Uh, it, it allows you to compute residues when there are a huge number of uh, 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 singularities. Okay, that is the advantage of this. So, I mean, uh, whenever we do something, we should see some advantage in that. So, in, so in that sense, that's the advantage of this. Okay, so, so for example, you know, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple of illustrations. See, suppose I write integral mod uh, z uh, is equal to uh, r. R sufficiently large, and if I write p of z uh, dz by q of z, where p and q are polynomials, okay. So suppose I do this. Uh, see, you would have seen in a first course in complex analysis uh, that you know if the degree of p is uh, uh, is uh, uh, less than uh, degree q minus uh, less than or equal to degree q minus two, okay. That is, the degree of the numerator uh, is is lesser than the degree of the denominator uh, uh, by at least two powers of the variable, okay. Then this integral is actually zero, okay. Okay. So so actually this is equal to zero if degree of p is less than or equal to degree of q uh, minus two. Now, you see, uh, so it's it's uh, the way you do this in a first course in complex analysis. There are two ways of doing it. One way is well, uh, I mean the easiest way, which is what people normally do, is use the uh, ML formula. We we use the uh, ML inequality, which says that uh, the integral of uh, the modulus of an integral is less, less than or equal to the integral of the modulus, and that's less than or equal to the maximum value of the integrand m on the contour. Times L, which is the length of the contour. Okay, this is the ML inequality. And what you do is that you 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 do this ML inequality estimation. Okay, and you know if uh, it'll it'll give you immediately that uh, 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 this integral will go to zero as uh, you increase r. If you make r, of course r has to be large enough so that you don't allow any zeros of q uh, outside r. Okay. Uh, 
uh, they should all come inside, right? So, uh, so if you that you so you make R big enough so that R includes all the zeros of Q, and mind you, zeros of Q are poles of the integrand, okay? Uh, and you make R sufficiently large to include all the poles of the integrand, then you get a quantity which will go to zero as R tends to infinity, okay? And since in fact this quantity is independent of R because of Cauchy's theorem it is independent of R because of Cauchy's theorem, you can let R tend to infinity and you can infer that this integral is 0. This is what people normally do, okay. And well, um, uh, uh, now you know, uh, try to do this using uh, the uh, uh, residue at infinity. So you know, integral over R, uh, integral over mod Z is equal to R, R sufficiently large is going to give you uh, 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 2 pi i times uh, minus the residue at infinity okay and you try to calculate the residue at infinity for this meaning that you know you uh, write this out uh, in uh, positive and negative powers of w of, of the variable z if you want in this case and you look at the equation of 1 by z and you will see that since the numerator degree is uh, 2 less than the uh, at least 2 less than the denominator degree you will never get a 1 by z term at and what therefore it will tell you is that at infinity okay at infinity you are not going to get a, a 1 by z term okay z being the variable and therefore uh, the residue is 0 and therefore the answer is 0 okay. So you can see this is 0 just like that okay you can see this is 0 just like that and, and a much harder thing is suppose degree of p is actually degree of q uh, minus 1 or if it is equal to degree of q, how do you make these computations, okay? Your computations will be, you will see the computations are very easy if you really use the residue at infinity. So residue at infinity is very useful to do these kind of calculations, okay? So, uh, so that is uh, uh, so that's something that uh, you should understand. Um, uh, so you know for example if I write uh, integral over mod z is equal to r and I write dz by uh, z to the 2014 plus 1 okay so this is a huge uh, polynomial in the denominator uh, all its zeros are simple zeros they are the 2014 <laughs> roots of unit of, of minus 1 uh, anyway uh, they all lie on the unit circle so I do not have to take r very large I just have to take r greater than 1 all right but the point is that if you now use the usual residue theorem and try to compute it it is not all that easy okay you have to cal calculate the residue of this at each of those simple poles and there are two there are 2014 of them and you will have to add all of them and then multiply by 2 pi i and you would certainly not do that okay rather what you would do is uh, take minus 2 pi i times residue <coughs> at infinity and you see that that is zero so uh, you you can easily see that this this is actually going to be zero of course if you apply the previous uh, criterion it is zero but uh, even you don't have to do that so let me illustrate uh, what you would for example do with, with this case okay so so here the function is f of z uh, i've taken the variable as z so it's 1 by uh, z to the 2014 plus 1 okay and mind you uh, i want to look at it at infinity okay which means uh, i want the laurent expansion at infinity and mind you that should be thought of as a laurent expansion uh, I, outs, that is valid oh, outside a sufficiently large a circle of sufficiently large radius mind you this function has all uh, all simple poles which are uh, zeros of the denominator uh, on and they all lie on the unit circle okay they all lie on the unit circle and therefore you know uh, if you calculate the Laurent expansion about the origin you will get two uh, Laurent expansions there is one Laurent expansion that will be valid in the uh, in the unit disk okay and it will actually turn out to be a Taylor expansion the reason is because uh, the function is actually analytic in the unit disk in the unit disk there are uh, uh, no uh, the, the, the denominator does not vanish all right. So if you write the first Laurent expansion centered at the uh, at, at z equal to 0 what you will get is it will be valid in the unit disk and it will actually be a Taylor expansion then you will get another ex Laurent expansion which is valid outside the unit disk okay and that is a Laurent expansion at infinity okay. So 
but if I go outside the unit disk, what happens mod z is greater than 1. So, I should write an expansion in term for, for, this, for, for the situation when mod z is greater than 1 and you know if I am trying to use uh, uh, geometric series, I always look at a situation when uh, the variable has modulus less than 1. So, this tells you that I will have to write it in terms of 1 by z. Okay. So, uh, so basically what I will do is, I so I will take this z to the 2014 out and then I uh, will I'll write it as uh, 1 by 1 plus uh, z to the uh, 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 20, uh, oops, 2014 to the minus 1. So, so I write it like this and now uh, you know, so, so this is going to give me 1 by z to the 2014 and here I am going to get 1 plus uh, z to the 2014 to the minus 1 whole to the minus 1. Now, if I expand it using the uh, geometric series, you will see that the coefficient of 1 by z is 0. That will tell you the residue at infinity is 0. Okay. And you, you see immediately that uh, this integral is 0. Okay. So, uh, so, this, so I am just trying to tell you that uh, uh, whenever you see problems, go back to those problems that you did when you were in, uh, when you took a first course in complex analysis, try to apply residue at infinity and you see many of the problems are easier, okay. So, I will stop here.